Hi there, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Lauren and today I want to share what we do for our simple morning basket. Now the video I just posted before this one was titled basically that I was overwhelmed with morning basket. And so you may be thinking, well, if you're overwhelmed with morning basket, why is this video about the morning basket that you do? That is a great question. And yes, that's true. I actually was overwhelmed with the morning basket that I was doing the first two years of our homeschool. So you can go check out that video and I kind of give a glimpse of like what I was doing. But basically, long story short, I was just trying to add too many things and incorporate all the books and rotating days and alternating days and looping this and doing all of these studies. And I was just trying to do everything that I saw and everything that I um, felt like I was supposed to do and actually really did have a desire to do those. But um, I love this quote, just because you can doesn't mean you should. And just because you should doesn't mean you can. And, um, once I stepped back though, I was I realized how much kind of added pressure and stress that I was adding on to myself and that um, it, morning time wasn't as enjoyable as it actually could have been. Um, and so from this third year, I really emphasize, okay, I still wanna do group subjects and family subjects together, but how can I do this in a simple way that I'm gonna actually stick with? So I wanted to prioritize what was most important to us this year and what my goals are and what I wanted to accomplish at the end of the school year. And when I focused on that, that was um, kind of like my foundation and base for what I could base my morning time off of. And then, then as soon as I would start to veer and be like, Oh, but maybe we should add this at like, I was, I brought myself back to the center of like, no, 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 don't do that. Just don't, there's time for that in the future. This year, we're just doing these subjects. Now I know there are many, many, many homeschoolers out there that do do these um, morning subjects, morning baskets with, um, and they do incorporate lots and lots of books and studies and all of those different things. And I think it is beautiful and amazing and great. And I will never bash or criticize or critique anybody for doing that because I do think that that is a wonderful thing to have in your homeschool. But I know that there are also other moms who just want something simple and just are in a stage of life for one reason or another, or they just there may be no reason and they just want to keep things simple. So if you're a mom like that and you just wanna see an example of a simple morning basket and it, it doesn't mean that you have to actually emulate everything I'm doing, obviously you make it your own, but it just oh, an example of like what a simple morning basket could be, this is why I'm making this video for you. So without further ado, let's get started on my simple morning basket. So first I have this DK Children's Illustrated Bible. So I really like this Bible, it's really pretty. Oh, um, my daughter tried to write my name and she doesn't know how to spell my name or our last name. Um, that's not good. This is going to go from the Old Testament in biblical chronological order and hit all of the major stories in the Old Testament and then go on into the New Testament. So I'll just give an example. So here's creation and each topic, each story is only two pages. So we only read two pages. It's a two page spread. And um, so here's an example. So they give the story and then they give like, this is what a cypress tree would look like. Um, then they give like another verse. And then here is Noah and his sons. This is like maybe what the ark would have looked like. So they give a historical, like an actual picture so that the child and you can get a better idea. Um, so here's another example of Abraham. And then this is like what a gold helmet would look like and a dagger that maybe a soldier would have back, back then. Desert wandering. So this is what it actually looks like. Gonna go ahead. So here's an example, Jacob's wedding. Here is um, a veiled secret. So this is like what she would look like on her wedding day. A girl um, in this time, in this area of the world, this is what she would look like. So that they get an idea that she wasn't looking like a bride that we have today. I like that they keep it real and realistic. And then 
Um, this is an example of like what the wedding feast would look like. So you can get an idea of how this works, um, that they not only mix the actual um, account of what happened, but they're giving you geography, um, a little bit, brief geography of like what it, the area looked like, maybe what some of the statues looked like, what the people looked like back then, and that way it just brings it to life and makes it more realistic. Uh, this is somebody weaving, so this is what um, she would have, Delilah would have been weaving, like she weaved um, Samson's hair into that. Next, we have More Than Words. Now, this is more like a devotional, and I absolutely love this. This is by Master Books, and we have been using More Than Words. We actually took our time with it and divided it in between two years. So we've been working on it for the past two years, and we just finished it up this school year. This has been such a good uh, devotional, like Bible study type of book for us. I have not found anything even similar to that. If you have used and if you're familiar with more than words and you have, you know of something similar, please let me know in the comments. I have been searching and I cannot find anything. Um, I know that people recommend not consumed a lot. I have not been able to get my hands on like a sample to actually see. But uh, my girls really love all the different activities and things like that 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 are incorporated into um, into this more than words. So um, how it starts off, I'll give you an example of a week, and the, all the weeks are laid out pretty similarly. Um, so in a, it starts off with a journal entry by uh, Rebecca Spooner is the one who uh, wrote this. So she's writing this from a perspective of two of her children, a boy and a girl. So it starts off with a journal entry and then it asks some questions after that and that, you know, some thought provoking questions. And then each week they have a key truth that they need to write down. Then they either have a poem or an art study or a hymn study, something like that, that they do some type of art that they incorporate into every week as well. And then they have a character study. So each week, not only do they have a key truth, but they are learning about one character. It could be honesty, compassion, courage, helpfulness, thankfulness, things like that. And then they compare and contrast. And then they do like flashcards and that you can write that character trait for the week on that. We actually don't do that because um, I, I just, I just kind of talk about it. And then honestly, one of their favorite things to do, shockingly enough, is there is a coloring page every week and they love to color. And so they actually like to color while I'm reading like either our history or our read aloud or our science, something like that. And then on the fourth day, there's only four days, which is nice too. It kind of gives you flex room. So if you only do school four days a week, or if you, um, you know, you just need a little bit of wiggle room in case you miss a day, they only, it's only four days a week. And then there is a fourth day, you draw a picture of like what you've learned this week. And then the last page is a summary of the key truth and you're writing a sentence or two about what you've learned. So I think it is very age appropriate. They say this is a four levels, I believe one, two, three, and it is divided into four units. This has been really great. I think I personally have gotten more out of it than my daughters have. Um, there has been so many truths that I just found in this that I would, that I hadn't recognized before or realized and I just really, really love this. So if you are looking for not just like a typical story like where they tell bible stories that you would hear about in sunday school but an actual how to know god who is god this one answers questions who is the trinity who is god and it's all very age appropriate it's not over their head is it is all written in ways that they can understand and it just opens up a lot of great dialogue that you can have with your kids so i really love this would recommend it uh check it out we might get the second one this year, or I might wait. There's a book two for grades like four to six, um, but I just don't know if they're quite there yet. If my young, if my if my younger two are quite there yet.
like to do is make sure we are doing some sort of memorization, passage memorization or poetry. Now I did not do this little menu thing. My mom did. I didn't ask her. She just did this, which is very nice. But if you don't have this type of thing, that's fine. You don't need it. But we did Psalms 1 and it was just written, broken down into each verse, verse by verse. So she did that, which was very, very nice and sweet of her. Um, so we do memorize. And the reason I do that is memorization when children are young really helps to build those brain synapses and just helps with their um, cognitive development and brain formation and helps with their long-term memory. When you memorize large, and if, if you're not a believer or a Christian and you don't want to memorize the Bible, memorizing poems, memorizing documents or speeches, things like that, just ch large chunks of memorization really help to improve those skills. Then we just work on basic um, practical knowledge, know-how. So our address, our phone numbers, what number do you call in an emergency? days of the week, months of the year. And we kind of will just do, I don't do all of them every day. I'll just do one of those, um, one, one or two of those every single day. And it helps having that repetition. And we do either history or science. I rotate the two. And so this year we did a Becca's history and a Becca's science. I actually have a video on both of those that I will link below. If you have not seen those already, check them out on how we did those, those um, curriculums for us this year. And then that is it. We keep it simple. <laughs> If you haven't figured it out already, that is my jam. I don't like overly complicated or else I'm not gonna stick with it. Okay, so if you've taken nothing else away from my video, from all my ramblings and babblings, if you're still here, first of all, thank you. Second of all, three things. First, remember your why, and I say that in my in my job, like my actual, you know, like corporate type job, I always tell my clients that remember your why, why are you not only homeschooling, but why do you want to do like a morning group subject, morning basket, whatever you want to call that. What is the reason why? Second of all, make sure. So I can't tell you what books to include or what even subjects to do. That's not, you know, this is not a video to say here, do this subject and this subject. And you might want to add this book here. That's not what this is about. Um, you have to think about what is most important in your morning basket. So like, what do you want to focus on? If you want to focus on um, the arts, like poetry and music and all of that, and Bible, let's just say it's those, then that will be your main focus and that's what you put your all of your energy into. That for this year wasn't my focus. My focus was on several other subjects. It was on Bible, uh, um, yeah, Bible uh, memorization and like a mixture of science and history. And that's what I focused on for this year. So focus on the subjects that mean the most to you. Third, my last tip is if it's not working, and I know you've heard this a million times, but if it's not working, you don't have to feel like you have to be forced to stick to it. Change it up, switch it up, make a switch halfway through the year. So you know what? I thought this was my focus and I thought this was my intention in the summer and at the beginning of the year, but you know what? Halfway through the year, quarter of the way through the year, whenever. Um, I realized, wait a second, this actually is not my, my main focus that I want to be working on this year. I actually, we're going to switch gears a little bit and don't be afraid to switch halfway through the year. Like it's totally fine. Um, I highly recommend it if it's not going to work switching to something that you feel much more like at home with and peaceful with and something that most importantly, you're going to stick with. So that is what we did this year for our group subjects, our morning time. We did it in the morning. It doesn't have to be done in the morning. We really liked it. I think for me personally, it was my favorite part of the day. And that was because we were all together, all learning the same things. There was minimal distractions. I mean, there were still distractions, but they were kind of mineral, minimal because we were all together at our table. And so I just think it was really, really great this year. Um, doesn't mean that I'll always do it like this every year. I'll probably add things and not do certain things. You know, each year it will change, but this year 
worked really, really well for us. Let me know in the comments what morning basket subject is your favorite, what group subject you like to do most, and why you like to do it. I'd love to know, and maybe somebody else can get read the comment and get an idea for, for their own morning basket. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Until next time, see you later.